Hi, this is Rodrigo from Mika, and this is the uh, Creative Hustler Show from Frame Freak Studio. And today's guest is Bobby Pontillas. He is a former Disney animator uh, who has a uh, who really is an amazing artist and now one of the co-founders of Taiko Studios, who are producing the fir their first film called One Small Step. So mm -hmm. welcome, Bobby. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be on here. So for the few people who don't know who you are uh, and about you, can you tell us a little bit about your history and how did you get started into art? Yeah, um, so uh, I always, like to draw, um, like all of us, at, like as when we were kids. Um, and uh, I drew all throughout junior high and high school. And, uh, and when I graduated high school, I knew that I liked drawing, but I didn't know what I wanted to do with it. Uh, I don't know what was possible at all, man. Um, so I just kind of on a whim, just like signed up for art school. And I went to the Art Institute of Seattle for about two years. Um, I not really knowing what I wanted to do until I saw um, Disney's Tarzan, which was about 1999, and it completely changed my life. Um, it completely just inspired and uh, what I was looking at on the screen just completely inspired me to say, like, I, I love to draw. I would love to make my drawings move. Um, and so I knew that at that point, like animation was my way in, and that was, uh, sort of, um, a sort of life changing moment at that point, uh, just because I, I sort of figured out what I wanted to do with my life. Um, so everything in my life directed towards that, towards animation. Um, and, uh, I was in Seattle, Washington. Uh, like I said before, and um, in Seattle, Washington, there's not a lot of film companies. Um, there's there's a lot of video game companies, too. So if you're into animation and art and it, living in Seattle, um, you're going to go into video games. So that's what I did. Um, I went into video games um, for a company called ArenaNet and made a game called Guild Wars. Uh, I don't know if you heard of that. Um, and I uh, made Guild Wars 2, worked on some Nintendo Wii games and that kind of stuff. And that was awesome, awesome experience working in games um, as an animator, as a computer animator, just an animator. And then um, I, at some point, just decided, hey, I remember I wanted to get into this because of f films and, and Disney films uh, more so. And I just decided uh, I... I have to sort of make that happen. Um, so I signed up for Animation Mentor. Have you heard of that, Rodrigo? Um, it's this online animation school. Uh, so I signed up for that, uh, did it for two years, man, and it was awesome. Um, I did uh, six terms of it, and then by the end, um, I came out with a demo reel that was good enough uh, to get into, finally, after years of trying to actually get into feature films. and I. I'm sort of paraphrasing that story. It was a long road, very hard and very painful. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, it was it was a long road. That's all I remember. But um, I got into Blue Sky, uh, thankfully. Um, worked with those amazing animators over there. Um, I worked on Rio and a little bit of Ice Age uh, 4. Um, I don't know if you've seen those. Um, crazy talented crew over there. Um, and then I um, started missing the uh, West Coast again, so I, I applied to Disney, uh, uh, just sort of after Tangled came out, and, and, it, and it sort of blew everybody away, and I was like, ah, I remember I wanted to work at Disney at some point, uh, you know, in my career, and that was my dream gig before, so I, I applied, and I, um, I, I don't know how, but um, they... they uh, saw my reel and were like, hey, we want to bring you on to Wreck-It Ralph. That was in 2011. And uh, so I moved out to the West Coast again. So I went Seattle, New York, California. <laughs> uh, so like coast to coast. Um, and uh, yeah, I miss those blue sky guys. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah, started on uh, Wreck-It Ralph and then worked on um, every Disney movie from Ralph to about Moana. Um, 
Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, Frozen. Yeah, Frozen. Uh, Big Hero Six, Feast, um, Zootopia, and uh, and did some stuff on Moana. So and then after that, uh, uh, sorry, I'll, I'll try to make this short. But um, I left feature to go work as a designer on the Tangled series, and um, and it was a character designer on that for about I think it was like a a year and a half or something like that. And then I left to, to um, help start up uh, Tyco. Awesome. And yeah. what is, like, I, I'm guessing that this decision of pretty much leaving Disney, because that was your first goal, like, like this yeah. was a goal that you had for many, many years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The decision to leave Disney to start your own thing mm -hmm. must have been, like, n not an easy one to make, right? No, no, not at all. It's a scary one. Yeah, yeah, very scary. Uh, who would leave a place like that with all of those talented um, folks and artists and all the, the films they were making? But I think, um, yeah, it was very scary. And it was very, I'm, I'm still, you know, just sort of like, um, I'm just sort of throwing myself into it and, and throwing yourself into the unknown. And, uh, and we'll see what happens. You know, um, I, 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 I sort of have sort of, that's kind of been the story of my career so far is just taking a chance on it um, and then see if it works out. If it doesn't, then, you know, it's okay. At least you tried. But it was just when the opportunity presented itself, you're kind of like, ah, you know, I should, I should at least try to live, you know, live a little and, and just take a chance on it. You know, it's very scary, but... You know, uh, uh, Disney will always be there. I wish them luck. I still have a lot of friends over there. Um, and uh, uh, But yeah, this is probably just something I had to do. Otherwise, I would just, you know, kick myself thinking what would have, could have, should have happened, you know. Definitely, I understand that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit how Taiko started? Uh, how did you got together to, to form yeah. this idea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, uh, the CEO of the company, Shafu Zhang, um, I, I can tell you my side of the story um, and, uh, and touch on my side of the story. Uh, so he reached out to me um, last year and just uh, talked about how he was thinking about starting his own animation company, um, how, uh, you know, he, he sort of had these... Um, he has a background and roots in China. And so, um, you know, he was over there uh, talking about, um, you know, starting our own animation company and, 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 and doing it with talent for the United States and having this joint venture of China and the United States uh, working together. Um, so he sort of um, reached out to uh, a few of us Disney artists um, in animation, um, in rigging, uh, tech anim, and just sort of said, hey, let's just, you know, we, we have this uh, interest. There's interest um, in China uh, to help us uh, form this animation company. And, um, you know, um, this, getting in from the ground up is just an exciting thing. As, as I'm sure you know, uh, you have your own company. Um, and it was just like, a, it was just like a, a dream, you know, just kind of. We can, we can do these things, we can do those things, you know, how it is in the beginning of a startup company, you're kind of, you know, we can do that, or I want to see more of that, or I wish we can do more of this. And so he just kind of found people that were passionate about animation. And then we, in uh, January last year, uh, we started up this new animation company that is kind of um, like independent um, in Burbank, California right next to all the studios. Uh, so um, that's where we are now. I think, yeah, going on a year, I think. Yeah. Like, how, how long are you guys going on for? Like, four years? Uh, well, technically, yes. Uh, we have been, yeah. I, I think we are about to have, like, five years since we started. Uh, wow. However, we did register yeah. the, into the U.S., like, mm -hmm. uh, I think it was one year and a half ago. 
So wow. congratulations. Thank you. In, and in the yeah. and in the beginning we didn't have a name or a website or anything. We just oh, really? like started to see results going like we just uh -huh. hang together as a group. And uh -huh. 2 years later after that and uh, getting a lot uh -huh. of results because it was working we didn't stop to even think of the name of the company. Wow. Yeah. And there was one client who was like, "Yeah, we really What's want it? to work with you." But you need to have like a corporate uh -huh. image, and it was, it was like exactly two years after it was a uh -huh. November. Uh, we started wow. in one November. Two years later, in wow. about the same dates, this client said yeah. this to us, and it's like, oh yeah, like we've been two years now, so we uh -huh. should uh -huh. decide on wow. a name or something. <laughs> I man, I would love. I know this is this is like a podcast uh, interview about me, but like I would love to hear about how you guys started up your thing and. I, I took a look at your website. I'm like, man, these guys are doing it too. Just like from the ground up, like company, just like, all right, well, startup animation company. It's, you know, that's awesome. That's crazy. We also discussed this, this a little bit with Armand Beltasar, but in our case, like we come from El Salvador. Uh, this is mm -hmm. like a third world country. And mm -hmm. there are, there is a lot of really, really bad things happening here, politically oh. speaking, economically speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty much, uh, my partner and myself, we work mm -hmm. together in the same company. We we went to the same university, and though we mm -hmm. met there, we didn't quite became like these real good friends there until we worked together into a company. He was like the animator mm -hmm. back then. I was like a nighty guy, and mm -hmm. well, at that time, we really loved that company. But prim and we didn't even have this idea of building a business. Like back then, mm -hmm. if you talk to my partner, he was like, mm -hmm. "No, no, all that I want is to having a job." Mm -hmm. But the economy went so bad here, uh, but yeah. so horrible bad that mm -hmm. at some point it was like, "Okay, if we continue this path, like this very horrible future, mm -hmm. like." kind of life and death <laughs> kind of situation is wow. waiting for us. Mm -hmm. And if we don't do something about it, then mm -hmm. like this is certain, like there is absolutely nothing that is going to change that. Mm -hmm. So on the other hand, we, thanks to technology, uh, back in 2012 or something like that, yeah. things started up, coming up. I started yeah. meeting pe people who started putting this businesses completely online uh, without yeah. offices or things like that. Uh -huh. And for example, one of the things that, one of the main reasons why I never wanted to put like a business here uh -huh. was because I had many, many friends who put a business here, like a physical one. Yeah. And because of violence and gangs and robberies, uh, oh, they shit. got really bad hurt uh, or mm -hmm. some of them dead. Mm -hmm. And that was like a really scary Used. option. Uh huh. But the thing about the internet is like, okay, like in the beginning, I didn't, I didn't even put my face on it. Like, yeah. it, it can be like completely online, completely safe. Yeah. Nobody here has to know yeah. that I'm part of this. So that uh -huh. felt really safe there, and that's where wow. we started jumping. And luckily for us, like technology be started to become better and better on the side mm -hmm. of business. Yeah. And one year and a half ago. Uh, uh -huh. Well, two years actually. It was February two thousand. Uh, yeah, it was in February of last year mm -hmm. that there was this company called Stripe, uh, mm -hmm. which is like for payments and services things like that. They mm -hmm. offer a program called Atlas, where they allowed you to register a, a business in the U.S. But they were mm -hmm. they started to uh, work until June. Mm -hmm. uh, of last year and mm -hmm. that's when we got in the beta program so we didn't even pay for it mm -hmm. and we got registered the business in the US and with that pretty wow. much we were able to use PayPal, Stripe, all these things that are, are not yeah. available in, in my country wow. and since then it, it's been like really great. <laughs> like, that's awesome. We really yeah. have faced some some bad moments to be honest Sure, uh, sure. but yeah. Even the worst moments of inside the history of building business, yeah, is nothing compared to <laughs> the things we we face in the past as employees here. So it was ah wow. yeah, <laughs> it's <Chapter>. really. <laughs> I 
I right I commend you guys. That's amazing. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and pretty much this podcast started uh, as a way of learning about the industry outside this country I because we, I see. we got this project uh, that it was about $30,000 mm -hmm. and we were like, yeah, 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 we can do it. And in our mm -hmm. minds, it's like, mm -hmm. we have no idea what we're doing. Me <laughs> and neither. We, <laughs> and yeah. we look into Kickstarter and yeah. found a similar yeah. project and emailed this guy and he said yes to the interview to pretty much find out how he did it. And yes. then I look who he was and he was Fred Seibert and then I read his resume and it, it blew nice. my mind. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And after that, it was like, okay, if this guy say yes, like who, yeah. who else will say yes? And next was sure. Stephen Silver and then was Bobby yeah. too. And, yeah. and pretty much it never stopped. <laughs> yeah, that's great, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, congratulations to you guys. That's awesome. Sounds like a lot of hard work and a lot of ups and downs, but you guys are doing it, and that's awesome. That's great. Yes, yeah. definitely. And and this is yeah. pretty much what, uh, how the podcast started, like as a way to learn uh, things about the industry that we otherwise didn't know how to. Like we just got mm -hmm. our US visa, like uh, yeah, I think about two years ago or something like that. Mm -hmm. So we have been only in the US for like seven days uh, wow. in one event. But uh -huh. but we uh, after going to that event, we started seeing like, okay, like there is a lot of people that we can meet. There is a lot to yeah. learn. Yeah. So that's when we started like pouring even more energy into the podcast and, and trying mm -hmm. to get as much knowledge as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's so cool, you guys. Have you guys ever made it up to CTN? Yes, pretty much that's the event okay. that we went. Uh, we yeah. went last year. This year we you couldn't guys do it. You this year? No, we couldn't okay. go this year because uh, right now we're in our country fixing some issues that are happening here. But we, are, okay. we definitely have planned already. Like As soon as the tickets start selling next year, we're going yeah. to buy it and we're going to <laughs> set the table for the yeah. first time. <laughs> cool. That'd be great to see you guys. That'd be great to meet you guys. Yeah. Cool. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's exciting. And on the side of the business on, of Taiko, mm -hmm. like who mm -hmm. is the one who has like the business skills? Uh, oh my gosh. Not me. So, uh, so it's our CEO, uh, Shafu Zhang. Um, so he was a animator at Disney from, he started on Big Hero 6 and worked on everything until Moana. Um, and uh, and then after Moana, he left to start up this business business venture. And so he's the one with all the uh, well the business acumen. I should hook you guys up, and and you guys can talk shop. Um, I'm sure he'd be he'd be uh, good to exchange experiences, and I'm sure you guys have similar similar experiences with the business side of like a startup company but it's you it's mostly shafu and luckily he gives us the space and freedom to just concentrate on the art and the animation and that kind of stuff i don't really understand that stuff anyway so i'm not really the greatest at it anyway so you know i don't know are, are you the one that takes care of the business side of things yeah i'm i'm thinking I used I used to do like art and things like that, but then yes. I had to stop for a while uh, uh, because I had to focus pretty much on living. <laughs> but yes. And, yes, and at the time, like in this, like art in this country is not like the best way to earn money. So yes. yeah. it went like about many years for me to leave art, and when I retook it, like pretty much I was rusty. So I think <laughs> all the business skills uh, uh -huh, pretty much uh -huh. to That's develop. That's great. It's great for the company. Pitching, selling, our uh, systems, things, things like that. And when we joined, like forces with my partner, and now my partner was like, he's one of the. I think he's the best 2D animator in this country, which is not saying too much because there are not too many. <laughs> Thing. No, I'm sure he's very, very, very talented, very skilled. Yeah. <laughs> so pretty much what. Uh, we join, and yeah, what you say, uh, this amazing thing happened where once I stop thinking about how to produce the, the things for the business, because mm -hmm. now he's the one focused on producing the art and producing the animations mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. that. So now my head is completely free to do 
business side and networking and so on. Really? And wow. his head is completely free to focus like completely on art. Wow. Yeah. And we found out like we ended up working much better that way. <laughs> really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. So it worked out. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and still like he, we do compliment a little bit because when it comes to clients locally, he has more reputation and, mm. and he knows how to handle them better. I, mm -hmm. I jump directly into learning business from people online, from uh, yeah. uh, people in the United States and in Europe and so on. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. later on, I realized that the rules that I have learned, mm -hmm. they, they work for people in the US, they work mm -hmm. for people in Europe, but mm. when applied to local clients, it's like, they do not match really? okay. so much because of the cultural differences uh -huh. and and also because the country is like not so much technologically developed. So there are many things that there are many discrepancies there. So yeah, yeah. And so when it comes to local clients, like he's like, <laughs> I, I told my partner like, okay, Mundo, here you go. <laughs> and, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and when it comes to, to international clients, then I take yes. uh, the reins yes. and. Pretty yeah. much, I focus on that. Yeah, so it's a lot of talking to uh, VCs. Uh, to be honest, we have we have taken a little bit uh, harder road. We do have the option of talking to VCs and mm -hmm. talking to investors. Mm -hmm. We want to leave it into like as as a last resort mm. because so far we we've been able to focus like to get commercial clients to do. I see. Uh, uh, let's say an explainer videos, uh, TV spots, yeah. things like that. Mm -hmm. And that has given us enough money so we could pretty I much see. operate and focus on creating job. I see. So we want to start exploring this path where we have like a team producing mm -hmm. commercial work mm -hmm. that give us the money mm -hmm. so we can produce original work. Mm -hmm. And that way we can hold on to freedom because if we take like... Uh, uh, capital, uh, venture capital money or something mm -hmm. like that, then you have to give a percentage of your company sure. and of yes. course a little bit of your yes. freedom. Yeah. Which if you have like a really good investor that can help out mm -hmm. because he can open up with network and, and other opportunities. Mm -hmm. But I still like it, uh, we are still not hitting that point where it's like, okay, yeah, things are bad. So we should yeah. consider that. So we want to explore that path further see. Mm -hmm. to see if we can create the the source of income ourselves so we can mm -hmm. have complete freedom on the creative side exactly got it yeah cool yeah uh, i see also that china has started to put a lot of attention into animation as well so for example yeah. many people don't know doesn't know about this yet but uh, I, I see that DreamWorks, for example, is not mm -hmm. a U.S. company anymore, but it sounds, but pre pretty much uh, China bought DreamWorks and now yeah. it's a Chinese company. Mm -hmm. So uh, is that the world that you are trying to explore there? So I think um, speaking uh, honestly, I, th I think it's just going to, I think what Shafu is trying to set up and what we're trying to set up is a, uh, a joint venture. Um, I'm not really sure uh, of the details of DreamWorks's um, operation there, um, but I think it's what ideally the, the goal would be is to have um, a team over here in LA and a team over there in China and um, working together. And that's kind of what the short has been so far. Um, it's, it's not like, um, you know, they're an outsourcing studio, man. Um, the way I've experienced it so far is just we're working with this team. Um, uh, and, and story and art was done over here on the L.A. side. Um, but um, as it's been so far, uh, for the short anyway, and I think the way the comp it's kind of indicative of how we want the company to operate is like... Um, uh, you know, we're working sort of together. Um, animation's been done over there. Modeling's been done over there. Um, we have dailies every day. Um, so I don't, 
I don't really know what the the sort of like example out there it is to compare it to. Uh, but so far, my experience on the short has been just just working with this team like overseas. And um, and, and that means because the, the time zones that the, the short is being worked on, like tw like all throughout the day, you know, uh, we're working on it on our end. And then they, they wake up and they work on it on their end. And they're, um, uh, I look at those guys as, as um, the, the team over there in China as uh, equals. And, um, and hopefully, you know, we can sort of cultivate a culture that's kind of stays that way. It's this sort of like, um, you know, cross continental, like, uh, like working relationship. Um, answer your question? I guess so. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's been my experience so far. And then hopefully, um, our experiences on the short can help cultivate what we want to do in the future, how we want to work together in the future. Pretty much trying to get the best of what works, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, um, you know, uh, just being open to like what what kinds of movies or entertainment that they respond to, um, and and the art that they like, uh, the films that they like on that side, and 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 I'm sure working with us, they they'd sort of um, get the experience of what it's like working in animation uh, stateside, you know, because we're bringing a lot to. What we bring to it is like our experience with Disney and our experience with Blue Sky and what they bring to it is sort of the cultural aspects, even working in companies over there in Chinese companies, what it's like, um, work habits, uh, as, uh, acting choices, art, aesthetic, all that kind of stuff. So um, it's been it's been really cool. I mean, like um, it's been just sort of a kind of a, a, a big collaboration, I think cross-continental collaboration, which I'm sure you know about, um, and, and trying to see uh, entertainment through another culture's eyes, I think is is been awesome. Yeah. Uh, I know that you cannot talk too much about One Small Step because mm. of obvious reasons, mm. <laughs> and that we have to wait uh, uh -huh. until pretty much is ready, but can you tell us a little bit more about the process and choosing the idea for the film and how did you develop it? Yeah, yeah. So um, the, the actual pitch for the film kind of came from a buddy of mine who's also at Disney named Trent Corey. And uh, we were pitching this film um, before we had this pitch for a film of a, a little girl that uh, wanted to be an astronaut and um, and uh, we thought that that was kind of like a you know like a big this was our big sort of shoot for the stars aspirational like dream big like short film idea um, and then so uh, we just we had this pitch going and at some point um, <clears throat> Shafu started um, talking to Trent about uh, his company that he was starting up and, um, and, uh, like, uh, Trent pitched them the idea of one small step. And, uh, he's like, I love that. Let's make this film, uh, like as our first thing at Tyco studios. Um, and then, so, uh, that was the first thing we just kind of dove head on into uh, when we started the company, because uh, we knew that we had to have a project and uh, we knew, I knew that I wanted it to be like an aspirational, inspirational uh, message, um, uh, something that was sort of forward looking, something that kind of felt um, like inspirational, because that's the kind of stuff that I'm drawn to. And uh, we just, as we brought more people on, um, you know how it is those like story jam sessions of like, okay, these are, these are like the broad outline details and, you know, really figuring out the story of like, um, who is, who are these characters? Uh, who is this main character? Who is, uh, her name is Luna. She wants to be an astronaut. Um, and then what is feasible, you know, in, in the amount of time that we have in a short film. Um, it was awesome. It was like the, the purest feeling of being a filmmaker of like, you probably felt this, of like late nights, 
you know, cracking open a beer, having everybody there, and then just like putting cards up on a wall and just saying, okay, what could it be? And trying to figure it out as a group, trying to figure it out as a group, um, being, let's be filmmakers, let's be artists. Um, we, we have only one chance to, to make a first impression. What do we want to say as a company? Uh, what do we, what, what's true to us? What is true to our feelings? Uh, what is true to our experiences? Um, and then so we just, man, I mean, like, it sounds cheesy, but we just try to come at it with, of like, like a place from like a heartfelt, like, you know, story. Uh, what is, what is genuine? What is real to us? Um, and so that's kind of how we started. Um, and uh, it's evolved, uh, obviously, <laughs> a lot from the initial, like, uh, get-go. But I think for the better, you know, I think he, along with that, you have to be hard on yourself, man. You have to be critical and, you know, um, just because something means, makes sense and means a lot to you, does it speak to other people? You know, what do other people think? So you kind of have to, you kind of have to, uh, you know, put it up on, put it up on blocks and just, and just uh, uh, really critique it so that it could be the best that it could be. Um, so, but hope, yeah, I can't, I can't wait to share it with everybody it's coming out, uh, I think like early next year. So, um, yeah, it'll be our first impression, man. You know, we'll see, we'll see what everyone thinks, but I, I I'm really proud of it and I'm proud of it. <laughs> Cannot wait to see it. it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Man. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah. You just mentioned something that is really important that, uh, that is this skill of being like really honest with yourself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and even going against this, like when you have this strong emotional notion that you want to do something, but you know that it's not mm -hmm. the right thing to do and, and you got mm -hmm. to pull it back. Mm -hmm. I, something that I saw uh, a lot of people in city when we went to city and X, mm -hmm. something that I see was that Many of these people here are trying to focus on becoming the artists and pretty much improving mm -hmm. their art. Mm -hmm. Some of them already had like a good enough level, mm -hmm. but they had absolutely no idea on how to pitch themselves, like no business mm -hmm. knowledge, even at the level of being an employee or how do you pitch yourself yeah. to other people. Yeah. And yeah. When I started entrepreneurship, first I started with a web design company that did apps. Uh -huh. And I had absolutely, like, I, I had no passion for it. Uh -huh. uh, pretty much I did it just because uh, the numbers told at the time when I, uh, I talked to some clients about uh -huh. the problems, I found that uh -huh. this solution could help them. Uh -huh. Pretty much took that, that idea and started selling it. Mm -hmm. And... Something good about doing a business that you don't care about, like emotionally speaking, is mm -hmm. that you can test a lot of things because pretty much you don't care. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you you can just mm -hmm. uh, do many experiments with it with no mm -hmm. with no emotional strings attached to it, which gave me a lot of uh, perspective of knowledge on business. And when we finally came to animation, that was something yeah. that I was passionate about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. First of all, the the first thing that I saw was that I could work three times harder than the other business and didn't feel it because wow. I was so excited about this this animation, oh, like animation wow. and, and, uh, and art has been my big thing since I was a kid as well. Excellent. So then I realized like, damn, like I've been working way harder than my previous business and I don't feel tired. So that was mm -hmm, mm -hmm. one of the great things. Mm -hmm, but the mm -hmm. second was that I was able to catch a lot of these moments where if mm -hmm. I didn't have the experience of the past business mm -hmm. where I could go more objectively into it, mm -hmm. I would mm -hmm. have pretty much fell into the traps of my own emotions. Mm -hmm. How did you develop that skill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, to your question, I think it's just a matter of considering your audience and considering the viewer of what would be entertaining and uh, uh, interesting to them. Uh, and then it's a balance, right, of telling your story and at the same time um, sort of considering what the audience 
how what the audience would feel, you know, putting yourself in the audience's shoes. I think a lot of times in animation, we're like, you know, but the audience, you know, we have to we have to make this clear for the audience or kind of like uh, we have to we have to um, uh, help the audience understand this or um, this will be more entertaining, that kind of thing. So I think actually even social media is kind of a great feedback parameter for that kind of stuff. I mean, I'm not sure if you're on Instagram or anything like that, but you know, it has a comment section and you put something very personal from your life. And, you know, um, when you've got a lot of people saying, I feel the same way, man, or I love this, or I can totally relate, you know, then you've got something, you know, I think that's, that's what it's about. It's about trying to be as personal as you can from your own life. Um, but also just sort of putting uh, your audience, um, putting yourself in the audience's shoes, I think would help. Yeah. Definitely. From yeah. my side, it was yeah. like a, also a, a, a very painful lesson really? because in the beginning I uh -huh. didn't do many things when it came to business because uh -huh. it didn't make sense to me because I didn't do these things. Uh -huh. But after many hits, I realized like I am not my customer. <laughs> like uh -huh. I am like the, my customer uh, acts in a different way uh -huh. than I do. Uh -huh. So I have to uh -huh. do the things uh -huh. according to what they do. So for uh -huh. example, I am really big on YouTube. So I like to see video interviews because I learn a lot yes. visually. Yes. I was yes. never, never, never a really good audio kind of user or experience so much that uh -huh. Uh -huh. let's say when I was in classes and and the format of the teacher like telling me the theory uh, will pretty much put me asleep. <laughs> and, 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 and I have some friends who took, who took pictures of me like uh -huh. sleeping in the middle of the class because I went to a, a, a place where they separate uh, to study system engineering then separated uh -huh. like theory and practice. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. when you have me in theory, I was like sleeping most of the classes. <laughs> And my teachers hated me because obviously for them it was like a lack of respect. And, yeah. But but I didn't do it like as a bad thing. Wow. It, I, I physically yeah. couldn't uh, avoid myself going into sleep well in, in the theory thing. But when I jump into the practice uh -huh. of developing and things like that, like I excel, like I completely excel. Uh -huh. so, so I learn from visual and and doing yeah. things. So yeah. for me, YouTube and watching the videos and, and having two monitors, like, for example, I have this monitor here and I put yeah. a video on how to do something and I do it here and that's how yes. I learn. Yeah. But, yeah. And, and what that translates to is that because of audio doesn't work uh, really well for me, I don't huh. listen to podcasts. But... Huh. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> and, huh. and, and the uh -huh. thing is that uh -huh. I... I I was doing this interview series first as a video, as a YouTube series. Mm -hmm. And then I went, well, like, I'm not my customer, so let's uh, mm -hmm. take all the audios from these videos and put it into podcast. Mm -hmm. It then pretty much it exploded that way. <laughs> like, wow. the, the, the number of listens that I have through all the pl uh, podcast platforms are like five times bigger wow. than what I have on video. Uh -huh. And he was like, okay, let's, there's the lesson. Like, I am not my uh, <laughs> client. And yeah. then I took the podcast and put it into these new technologies, the Amazon Alexa, the Google Home, uh, uh -huh. the Apple HomePod, uh, Sonos. Uh -huh. And it exploded even higher. And now, for example, the, three, the top three cities that listen to us is like, San Francisco, even though we haven't interviewed anybody from San Francisco and we don't have many <laughs> connections there. Like top tech hub, uh, uh -huh. then the other one is Mountain View, another top tech hub, which pretty much uh -huh. means that probably many of these people here have Amazon Alexa or, or Apple Home uh, uh -huh. uh, or, or Google Home, uh -huh. and then Dublin, which is like another tech hub in, really? in, wow. in, in Europe. So it's like, yeah. wow, like, <laughs> this, like this is the biggest lesson. Like I don't have any of these technologies. I don't have an sure. Amazon Echo. I don't have sure. a Google Home. Sure. However, thanks to being available in that, now we're getting 
ton of like our top three uh, cities are those because we are available in those platforms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the same. I, I think that's the same. I mean, like uh, we're in a entertainment medium, man. We're in film, and uh, you know, if we only wanted to make films for us or for our family or our moms, then we can do that. But like, we're we're trying to make it to get the every artist wants to reach the 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 largest possible uh, sort of demographic or uh, audience as he can, right? And uh, I think a little bit of that is speaking to everybody, you know, um, speaking to everybody and and uh, uh, sharing experiences that you have with everybody. So I think it's the same. I mean, just having one foot and just putting yourself out there and being vulnerable, and then the other half is just. Is anyone is anyone want to see this? You know, is anybody gonna want to see this stuff? You know, so yeah, something that I learned as well from going into tech and then going uh -huh. to city and, and and pretty much learning about all these uh -huh. industries uh -huh. is that the tech startup community yeah has a lot like insanely a lot in common with the animation industry on the really? terms of how it works. Yeah. And I see that not many people have realized the same connections. Mm, mm -hmm. And let me put you this example. Like, something that happens a lot is that there comes these kids in the tech industry. There come these kids that maybe uh, their parents are rich and have this <laughs> lot of connections and pretty much help them a lot. Sure. And, of course, they come from this life where pretty much daddy has handled everything to them and now yeah. because it's like uh the the most famous thing building your own app they go into mm -hmm. the tech mm -hmm. app uh, uh a startup community and uh, they lose and they cannot handle that because in the tech world like Nobody cares who you are. Nobody cares who your daddy is. Like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, the only mm -hmm. thing that they care is like, is your app good? Mm -hmm. Yes or no. And if mm -hmm. your app is not like really, really good, is if your app is not solving a really deep pain or problem, mm -hmm. then nobody gives a shit. <laughs> and, and pretty much the same happens when uh, in the animation industry, like most of the people who will see the films of your mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. are young people <laughs> mm -hmm. and the kids don't give a shit about if you have an oscar or who you are or no, who your yeah, connections yeah, yeah. in this day are like yeah is your movie good or not <laughs> and if it's yeah. not like and, yeah. and this is something that i realized soon, like really late. like oh that's why it takes for example in city and x we had like this talk with all these guys who have series and it took them like four to ten years to get approved a, a television series, mm -hmm. and the reason why was because the kids doesn't ma like the kids doesn't care that this was the creator of all these series and all <laughs> yeah, pretty much yeah. its curriculum. They uh -huh. only care like if it is the series good or not, and the companies pretty much had to make really really sure, be it through likes in YouTube or comments in YouTube or other kind of metrics, that mm -hmm. the series actually has some future. Mm -hmm. Before yeah. saying it, yes to it. Yeah, yeah. It's just a different world, man. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, like, uh, and when you just start like uh, learning from the marketing kind of th uh, mm -hmm. things that the tech and startup community does, mm -hmm. like not. There obviously there are some things that are not applied to animation or art, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but there are many things that they are doing that can be applied to a uh, animation business mm -hmm. because it is the same principle. Like you yeah. have to, uh, first your product has to be good, but yeah. secondly, how can you make this? So it, the product itself become viral, viral. Yeah. By itself. Uh huh. Uh huh. How do you find an audience? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 That's, that's super interesting, man. Like I, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're all trying to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, uh, I wanted to ask you this. Uh, mm -hmm. When you see people starting in art, mm -hmm. 
what is the most common mistake that you see them doing that they are not aware that they are doing? Hmm. In the animation industry, um, I think, hmm. Well, you know, a lot of people like to go on and on about, um, uh, a lot of people are, I should say, a lot of people are worried about finding their own style um, and, and, and finding their own sort of signature right away. And um, I would, I would just say, don't worry about it. You know, don't worry about that right now. I mean, like, I think there's a pressure when you're in art school that you have to find your style and right away. And I, I would just say, just, ch just chill out a little bit. You don't have to have that just sort of, you don't have to put so much pressure on yourself. I think that's the one thing is putting too much pressure on yourself of like being this uh, like art internet a celebrity or like um or, or or putting so much pressure on yourself that you don't have your style i wouldn't worry about that so much right now um because you're just learning and uh then you should explore a little bit and you should just concentrate on the foundational stuff of like drawing well just concentrate on drawing well what does drawing well mean well that means like learning all you can about like all the foundational stuff like anatomy and like perspective and color and and uh and 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 you know what honestly probably not overwhelming yourself and thinking you have to learn it all in art school just just keep learning and uh don't worry about your signature art style man um right away because it'll always change um you have to be diverse anyway to make it in the animation world and uh, you should be able to do a lot of different styles and not just one. Um, but don't worry about uh, like finding your, your, your signature thing right away. Um, that would be my uh, like main thing. And then the second thing is just um, to work harder than you'd ever imagined working. I mean, like, I, I think there's, when I saw in my art school, I think there was kind of like a, a, a feeling of like, we're, we're doing fun stuff and we're going to make games or we're going to make movies and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, uh, I, I think because of that, I think people kind of took it casually, you know, like they, they're just kind of like a doodle here and there, you know, but in, when you're in art school, you have to make it an obsession. Like you can't just casually go in, into that direction. You have to go at it with everything you have. And the hardest workers are always the ones that'll, that'll sort of like stand the test of time and make it. The hard, you gotta work hard, man. It's not, it's not easy and it's not like running around on scooters and just sort of like, I don't know, just like it takes a lot of hard work. And I think that's, it sounds simple, but when you go to art schools, you, you can see the hard workers, you know, like um, you can see the ones that are working hard to get there and hustling to get there. And they stand out, they stand out from the crowd. And I think if I can throw a third thing in there is like be, <laughs> uh, be inquisitive, which is like ask questions, be interested, ask questions. Um, you know, don't, don't be that sort of um, student that is just kind of like above it all and cooler than everything else uh, and just doesn't have any questions, just ask questions. I mean, like if you run into a professional or your teacher, ask questions, like be interested, you know, like how does this work? You know, raise your hand, ask questions, even if you're just, if it's the start of dialogue. I mean, like don't be too cool and above everything. Um, be interested. You know, because that's how you'll learn. Those kind of students are the ones that will excel. I, I, I that I've seen. Um, you know, the ones that are just kind of like, hey, hey, how do you, how does this work? You know, when you know, blah blah blah. 
you know, or like, hey, you're here. How does this, how do you approach it when you do this? Just be interested, you know, just don't, don't just be like, yeah, cool. You know, I it just, just, you're above that. You, you owe yourself, you owe it more to yourself to engage with other people, uh, with professionals or with just your fellow classmates. You owe it to yourself to engage with them and not be that student that is just kind of like in the back, not talking to anybody, not asking any questions because they're an artist and uh, they know what they want to say. Um, no, it's a team effort, you know? Uh, that's what I see. It's, it's less artistic and it's more personality-wise. Like you, Rodrigo, like you're a very, like, uh, you're a curious person you're a curious person and that's why you're successful is because you're always trying to learn you're always trying to do better and that's why you you are where you are now um you gotta be that way man when especially when you're a student don't you think definitely uh this is something a concept that, that was taught to me <laughs> and really is still with me it, it is uh -huh. about the external uh, humility and internal uh -huh. humility. Uh -huh. Now, external humility is pretty much when people uh, seem to be humble. So, for example, huh. you don't see them acting like they are the big shot or anything like that. They are really mm -hmm. humble and all that. But then you go, hey, like, for example, if, if I'm talking something someone about a business, here's a book from this guy who may, like, let's say billions of dollars, you should read it. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, no, I, I, I don't need that kind of thing. And it's mm -hmm. like, really? There, there <laughs> is absolutely nothing that you can learn from a guy who just made billions of dollars. And, and that's when you pick up that they are maybe externally humble, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, but they are internally arrogant because mm -hmm. they believe that they already got it handled and that they can, like, there is nothing else to learn from somebody else. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, like that you can see somebody, and I know a couple of guys, uh, mm -hmm. let's say one famous, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Jordan, uh, they mm -hmm. go and ask him, like, what do you think about the other team? And he's like, I'm going to crush them. I'm going to completely humiliate him and, and, and things like that. And, and pretty much he went on to rant and yeah. give a speech that was not humble at all. He was <laughs> like, yeah, like I'm the king of this thing. I'm going to crush the whole team and all that. Mm -hmm. But when they interview uh, all the team, uh, their team members, like the, the, they all say that when somebody came to pretty much give their experience to the team and the strategies and all that, Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Jordan was sitting there, like completely quiet, and putting a lot of attention to what that person was saying. Mm -hmm. So on that other side, like this, you have this guy who is like completely yes. arrogant yes. In, in in his way of being externally yeah. speaking. Yes, but he knew that there was something that he could learn about somebody mm -hmm. from somebody mm -hmm. else. So mm -hmm. he was internally humble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and you can tell. You can tell too, right? You can tell, like the guys that are internally humble. Um, but I think that's. Uh, I think that's a big. Th like, if I can impart anything to students now, it's just like, be humble and be inquisitive. I mean, I mean, it might feel like we have it all figured out, but we don't, and uh, that's okay. You know, that's okay to not have it all figured out. It's okay to ask questions and be vulnerable. It's okay. And to not know it all, that's okay too. I mean, if you don't know something, just say it. Just, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. And that's okay. You know, just being honest. Um, but yeah, those are my, I think, like to answer your question. Yeah. Definitely. And in the last five years, what is some belief, habit, or behavior that you have taken that has improved your life as a professional or overall? Hmm. That has improved my life. Yes. I think, yeah, yeah. I, I think it would be, so you have the art that you do in your nine to five um, job. And then 
you have your own personal art if you can find the time to do it. Um, you know, you're doing all that time for the studios. I think for your personal work, I think it would just to, to, to make art that is personal. And that has, I think, had given me the most satisfaction um, is making art that is of my life, uh, that is the experiences that are pulled from my life. Um, and it seems to, you know, um, resonate the most and just, just to be personal with your art and not, uh, you know, not be so pressured into creating the art that you feel like people will want to see or will, will give you the most kind of, uh, accolades and that kind of stuff, but just like put yourself out there and just like experiences that you've had people that you know put them put it out there man i mean like draw it uh paint it uh experiences that you've had and 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 people that you know and that you love uh, immortalize it man with your art you know I, uh immortalize those moments and those feelings uh you know and uh your art will be very specific it'll be you specifically you and um you know, you'll, you'll kind of leave a trail of art that is very unique, you know, to your experiences, I think I would say, uh, is what I found is the most uh, gratifying, you know, be more personal in your, you know, in your personal art. Yeah. This is something that has come. Uh, I think this is the third time that I hear that about really? people do, like doing their work. But then they find time to do pretty much art for themselves. Yes. And that yeah. has improved a lot of their, the quality of their life and mine. And yeah. 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 I mean, I, th I think it's because you just feel like you're, you're, you're leaving uh, some, you're putting out something that is you, you know, and not the studio. And I think that's very gratifying. Yeah. And, when you feel like overwhelmed or unfocused, mm -hmm. uh, what do you do to go back to pretty much being centered? Oh, um, come home and talk to my girlfriend that has nothing to do with arts. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't, I, I'm, I'm, you know, you're a uh, significant other, like you come home, I don't know if she's involved or he's involved in animation, but I come home and it's not even on her mind, <laughs> like art or animation, that kind of stuff. And it's, and I think that speaks to getting some perspective of like, we have this focus art animation kind of like goal uh, all throughout the day. And we're so worried about it, but like there's a bigger world out there, you know, and there's your friends that aren't artists and there's your, your family that isn't, into animation or anything like that. And I think uh, like remembering to take a step into the real world, I think is always helps me, you know, regain my focus, I think, you know, because it's, you know, I mean, like it's, it's, uh, I think it's, it's, it's great that we can do what we do and we're passionate about it, but like, um, you know, uh, it's not the end of the world if, you know, you couldn't nail this painting today or you couldn't draw today. I've had many days where I just draw, draw, draw. I feel like I can't draw anything. I can't. And I get so stressed out about it and I get so frustrated about it. And then I'm just like, you know what? I'm getting paid to draw, you know, like I'm getting paid to freaking draw. You know, like that's, it's crazy. And what do I, why am I in a bad mood? This is the greatest thing on earth, uh, getting paid to draw or paint. But you know, sometimes you just get frustrated, you know, but taking a step out into the real world, man, and just think, saying, oh, this is awesome. You know, uh, that I even get paid to do this kind of thing. So yeah, that's why I do. I definitely agree with you. Like, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. far, so far, it's crazy that when I look back, like we had 
years doing this so far we never <laughs> had a, like a fight with my team members because it's like yeah it's <laughs> like drawings <laughs> ah so is your is your is your wife in in animation oh uh, no no i mean my uh, my business partner <laughs> yeah oh okay uh, okay okay no i'm not married yet so <laughs> oh, okay 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 pretty good yeah uh Something. This is this is going to be like a very tricky question, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, what is something that you didn't expect at all that became true, and is really important in your career? Um, not expected at all, and it came true. Um, I think. Hmm. I think, let's see, I have a lot, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think the rejections, the rejections, like, like um, the rejections that have gone through, that I've gone through in my life suck when I'm going through them, but they always sort of lead to something different and sometimes even better. Um, you know, I've, I, uh, like all of the rejections, I mean, I, I'll say one thing in like 2009 when I was in video games and I was trying to make it into film, I sent out applications and reels to every film studio out there. Sony, Disney, DreamWorks, Pixar, all of them, man, all of them. And I remember that year I got rejection letters from all of them, every single one of them in 2009, right when I graduated Animation Mentor, uh, Blue Sky even too. Um, and, uh, and I think that kind of stuff sort of sucks at the moment, you know? I mean, like I even got rejected from like a Disney talent development program. Um, but all that kind of stuff is like, uh, I remember going away and just sulking about it and just being very sad and uh, defeated. But, you know, if you really want something, you'll kind of pick yourself up again eventually and and keep going. Um, and uh, I think those are the things. I, like, I got rejected from Disney uh, tell that program in like, uh, 2009 or something like that. And, uh, and because of that, um, I just sort of, um, uh, it opened up the door for me to go elsewhere and, and start my career elsewhere. So, um, I went to blue sky instead, um, because for some reason I got rejected at blue sky, but then again, they sent me another letter and said, hey, they had a call and, uh, some people, pulled some strings and, and, and gave me an interview and, uh, and, you know, that big rejection from Disney kind of opened up the doors at amazing place at blue, blue sky. And so, um, that kind of stuff, I mean, like the rejections are always sort of hard to take in. Um, uh, but they always sort of open up the door to something new, I would say, you know, like, I, I'm assuming that, um, with your company, Rodrigo, it's like the big, rejections that you guys have went through have opened up a new door to somewhere else you know always it always happens that way yeah actually i tell this to many people because yeah it is crazy but we had this event of illustration in my country like a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. and there was this place where pretty much people were sending their art and and they were exhibiting their art there and I saw many of them, and at this point, I have seen many portof many many portfolios of people in in Disney and Pixar. Mm -hmm. And something that I see, at least the people that the artists that I know locally here, uh, this is a huge mistake that they are making. That they have they know somebody who works at Disney through internet, mm -hmm. and it's usually somebody really famous, mm -hmm. and Pretty much he's famous because maybe his art or her art is amazing, right? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so, and they idealize that, like, this is like the minimum requirement to enter Disney. This is like the minimum mm -hmm. required to enter DreamWorks, whatever. Mm -hmm. What they do not realize is that there are also many people who are not famous, internet or whatever, uh, because maybe they are shy or maybe that's not their personality mm -hmm. that they are working for Disney. And I have seen their portfolios and maybe yeah. their portfolios are not as, uh, I don't know, as, as impacting as the other, mm -hmm. the other guys. Uh, but they are still at Disney because they are good enough. They meet the minimum requirements Mm -hmm. to be there and i know mm -hmm. many of these people who are like above that line mm -hmm. but they never apply mm -hmm. and then there comes this guy and tells me like i don't remember what his question was oh yeah it was like a, like how to get into one of these biggest studios because he thought that it was impossible for people in my country to mm -hmm. work there and it's like Mm -hmm. That's bullshit. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to let you tell yourself this lie. Mm -hmm. And then he asked me, "Then why nobody in this country is working for this big studio?" And it's like mm -hmm. they are not even applying. Mm -hmm. How are they going to work for Disney if they are not even sending an application? Yeah. <laughs> and and, and that and, and I tell them like, apply, uh, ask, like. Yeah. Do something Reach because if, even if they say no, then you can ask why not, mm -hmm. and now you have an answer of why not, and now you yes. can improve this thing. So, for mm -hmm. example, uh, when this podcast was starting, I mm -hmm. tried to reach uh, to John Lasseter and at Cadmul, and I got their they I got their <laughs> their direct email. Then they sent me to his PR agent. Mm -hmm. And now this PR agent was like, okay, no, because you're starting and like, they are very busy <laughs> and this podcast is very sure. small. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. you have to have this the kind of number of uh, uh -huh. like uh, listeners and things like that to get mm -hmm. them. Yeah. So it's like, okay, now I have a number. Now I can work to get that number. And once I get that number, I can apply again. <laughs> It's not like a no forever, but if you yeah. now if you get a no, exactly, you can ask why, and now you now the know the reason why. Now you can work mm -hmm. on it, and mm -hmm. what and even better, what happens if they say yes? Yeah, like the reason why we uh, this is uh, podcast number fifty three. So mm -hmm. the reason why I got few, like in the beginning, I was sending like ten emails, and one or two people say yes. Mm -hmm. And then there was this point where I sent like, okay, I want to get like f four interviews. So I sent like 40 emails. <laughs> and uh -huh. A lot of people say yes. And it's like, okay, I have crossed that point. <laughs> and I was very busy the next weeks because I have sent a lot of emails. Yeah. But yeah, like one, they can say yes to even if they say no, you can learn and improve exactly. and they mm -hmm. can say yes later <laughs> yeah perseverance on the same topic uh pretty much you have told us this history of what happened to you mm -hmm. but just in case there is another history uh is there like a uh apparent failure that you have uh that led to great success in the future later on or uh, it's like a favorite failure maybe that you have. Is this the one that you just told us or is there another history like that? Hmm. I think, <laughs> I think uh, when, let's see. So when um, my biggest, <laughs> I think my, my biggest disheartening sort of letdown was again, rejection of like, of uh, applying to these things. And uh, I remember applying to uh, Disney for like Volt. And um, they're like, yeah, yeah, you're kind of in the running. Um, and then uh, we're just waiting for all of the other schools to graduate and then get all the other portfolios and reels. I'm like, great. Um, and then so I was in the running. I was in the top, you know, whatever, five or whatever. And then, uh, and then uh, when all the other schools graduated, there's all this talent that came out. 
And then they're just like, um, sorry, but you kind of got pushed down. And, uh, and uh, we picked other um, students, I guess, to take your place. And I was like, but I just, I got my all my hopes up and, you know, going to Disney and all that kind of stuff. So that was a huge blow. Um, but uh, so I didn't get that. And then, uh, like I was saying before, um, Blue Sky had contacted me um, saying they, they want to hire me as a full-time animator um, and not a trainee or intern or this ever. They, they saw something in my reel that they were just like, we just want to hire you full-time. And, and uh, that was the best experience that I could ever had like working with those guys full-time as an animator. And it probably wouldn't have happened if I didn't get rejected on uh, that other, the other film. So, I mean, that's probably the biggest one I can think of. Um, there's a lot of little ones too, you know, uh, um, you know, of like, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I asked you before about something that you didn't expect at all, uh, but now, was there something that you expected from the very beginning that yeah. became true <laughs> either way, and it's real and it's really important? Um, from the very beginning, is there something that I expected to happen? Like, uh, something that is true about the yeah. career that yeah, is really yeah, important. Yeah. So, okay, I'll tell you this, Rodrigo. Like one of my biggest things is to create something and put it out there that inspired me, that, uh, that inspires people like when I first saw Glenn Keane's work in Tarzan. That's awesome to me. That's kind of like one of my big goals of like, you know, when you're, I don't know what it was for you, Rodrigo, but like when... When I watched Tarzan, I was just like, oh, wow, that spec is crazy. This is exactly what I want to do. Ah! And it kind of, it changed my life. I mean, like, it changed my life completely. And I'm not just saying it's, it was that movie. It was animation. Changed my life. It made me want to work harder. It gave me direction. It gave me a goal in life. And it, I knew what I wanted to do. And I wasn't even that great of a student in high school. I was a crappy student in high school. But that gave me m inspiration, motivation to aim for that. And that changed my life. It's crazy. It, animation changed my life. And I don't know where I'd be without it. So all I want to do, I, what I'd love to do is give someone some someone young, some kid, that same experience of like, oh, that's what I want to do. Yes. Yes. And then you know how it is? You spend the next couple of days drawing that character. You spend the next couple of months drawing that character. And you're kind of like, someone asks you, what do you want to do with your life? You're like, I want to do that. You know, I want to do this. I want to do this. And your life has changed. And that was a very special moment for me. And I just want to give that to somebody else. Uh, that moment of just like, man, I don't, what was it for you? Do you remember? To be honest, it was not a huge moment like yeah, that, it's okay. but it was yeah. a series of small ones and Good. coming yeah. from many different angles. So, really? for example, I the animation thing and drawing and all that, uh -huh, I uh -huh. truly do not remember how it started because I, I literally have no memories where I wasn't drawing. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember seeing like uh, Snow White and yeah. The Little Mermaid and mm -hmm. Sleeping Beauty and pretty much all these movies. And always, always drawing since I have a memory. So and when was the moment where you're kind of like, I'm doing this, I'm, this is my career? Pretty much. Mm. Yeah, it was like kind of all every time that I wanted like going away from the path, there was something small coming back to it. Now, in this, my case was like really hard to pinpoint because 
in this country, like you have no idea how much people go against art. Mm. Like you tell your parents, yes. if, if you tell your parents here, like I'm going to become an artist, that's, that's like the worst thing you can tell your your family, your parents. Yeah. And even the idea mm. of building a business here is still considered crazy. Mm. Like mm -hmm. I went to, I, I remember in, in one Christmas, I was telling my uncles and my aunts that, hey, I'm going to start like a business online, like kind of automated thing. Uh, my idea is that this thing will work by itself is, oh no, you're crazy. No, you're believing the things in movies and all that. Like it was all discouragement, <laughs> like, oh wow. And, and there were, there are a couple of moments that maybe had a little bit more weight. Mm -hmm. One was that I remember reading uh, this article that pretty much it has, it had like the top 20, uh, fears that people had when they were going into entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and starting their own ideas and things like that. And and I read them all. Pretty much it was like a study that they made interviewing a lot of people in the US. And I read them all and I was like, that's my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that, all the top 20 things that most people fear, like the worst cases and areas, that was my, my present life at that moment. Like, And that was the moment that I thought, well, well if I'm already at the worst possible position, then it's all upside. <laughs> like I, I, I literally have nothing to lose. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that is what was one thing. Another, mm -hmm. an, another moment was when a friend of mine recommended recommended me this book called The Game uh, by Neil Strauss. Pretty much is how they started like a community of guys, uh, of teaching guys how to pick up girls and things like that. Mm -hmm. and, and the book is really interesting, but the moment that caught my attention was when they started like selling it as a boot camp mm -hmm. and they were charging like $500 to teach a, a, per person to mm -hmm. teach them for like three days. Mm -hmm. And at the point, at that moment, my salary was about $700 a month. Mm -hmm. So I didn't thought at all, like, speaking of girls, like I was like, you can sell this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like there, it, there are people paying this to, to learn like how to pick up girls in the, the street. And mm -hmm. then I went online to find to find that and I realized that these same guys in the book like had increased their price and now they were uh, charging like $2,000 per person for only three day boot camp. Mm -hmm. And I was like amazed like if these guys can sell that shit, I can sell anything. Like mm -hmm. the, the, if, if people are paying that kind of money for that, uh -huh. then animation doesn't seem that crazy. Uh -huh. <laughs> And the yeah. third moment was when I read the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. And that's when I like got a, like in my hands into the logistics of how to use the tools in the internet mm -hmm. to do a business. Mm. And from that moment I was like, uh, I, I already had like a lot of things to myself and pretty much yeah. had, was at a point where there was nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. And again, like we were into a position like our life was going to be like really horrible either way. So <laughs> uh, after that, it was like, well, you know what? Like, uh, I really don't like this kind of life. I have five years working pretty much at that point. I also worked so, so hard that I had gotten my dream jobs here, like the, the top companies that people expected, like most people in, in this country admire. And I got to the top companies to the positions, the dream job. And I was like, yeah, this sucks. Like this, this, is, this wasn't at all what I was expecting. <laughs> so with yeah. nothing to lose, I was like, yeah, you know what? Like, let's do this thing. Like either way, I'm not losing anything. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So it's it, like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's very weird because it, it, on one hand, like, since going into animation and business and all that, is, it like is, it has gotten us to so many great places that we didn't even dream of. Mm -hmm. Like my initial goal when I started the business, we went over that, 
w way more than I ever expected. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it's, it's coming from a point where, okay, yeah, we are living our dream, but if we don't live our dream, there is this horrible life waiting for us. So <laughs> let's not do that. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right. <laughs> yeah. On the other hand, on the other hand uh, to the people who are about to enter, mm -hmm. like these artists who are young, driven, uh, who want to succeed, and they are about to enter like the real world, yeah. what would be your advice to them? If they're young, driven, um, hardworking, um, then I would say... Look forward to working with you soon because that is the key to success. Um, young, hard, dri hard working, driven, humble, um, and just just ready to ask questions and learn. Um, good working with people, then I will be working with those people soon. They'll probably be my boss at some point, but those are the those are the people that make it. Um, and uh and just keep those people just keep doing what you're doing just uh i know those kind of people of uh, people of like you know they don't take their talent for granted when someone says you're so talented they're not like thanks they're like okay thank you but i know how hard i work to get here you know and i know that i have a long way to go and i know that i'm not there yet and will never be there so they just kind of take it in stride and just kind of keep doing your thing, keep working. But, uh, um, you know, I, I think the most, I've said it before, like the, the best people I've encountered in the industry are the most hardworking and the most humble. You know, they always work hard. They work harder than anybody else. Um, I, I can tell you, uh, like the best character designers, the best animators I've ever seen, the best visit artists I've ever seen, are the hardest working ones uh, just to just, uh, you know, keep working hard, keep working smart. And humility is an artist's secret weapon because uh, when you're humble, you're always open to learning new things. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, for those students that are coming out there, they'll make it. I'm not worried about them. They'll land a play. There's so much opportunity and so many people are looking for great artists. Um, I would say that those people I am not even worried about. You know, I'll be working with them soon. So. And what about, I, I know maybe you have seen a couple of those. What about mm -hmm. those who are talented, who have mm -hmm. it, like mm -hmm. have all the necessary things to succeed? But for some reason, they are filled with self doubt or self doubt. Maybe afraid. Wow. Yeah, that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I know a couple of artists who are really good, but they sure. don't believe it, and they don't uh, like. They really think that uh, they are still not there yet. Uh, what would be your advice to them? Um. I would say that for those artists, I think um, filled with self-doubt because I think we've all been there. Um, I think I would say for those artists, we, that it's just a, when you get out there, and if you're really talented and you have the skills, if you're, I think it's self-doubt just kind of comes from two things. I think it's just not enough people like encouraging them. And then number two, uh, uh, just being too hard on themselves. Um, I would say that uh, once you get out there in the in the industry, people will start to recognize your work and compliment you for it, and 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 uh, and you'll you'll start to realize your place in the industry. And then number two, I think is just to not. It's easier said than done, but just don't be so hard on yourself. I mean, there's a lot of pressures of like, 
whatever the pressure might be of, you know, not being as great as this artist. Um, but the not being as great as this artist thing is false because there's always somebody better. Always. I mean, it's okay that there's someone better. That's fine. It's okay. You don't, it's, it's totally fine. Um, and I think that comes from comparing yourself. Um, but I think it comes from maturity in the industry and growing up. Um, you'll learn that you'll accept that there's always going to be someone better. And that's totally fine. Know your worth. Um, and then, uh, and then don't put so much pressure on yourself to um, sort of, I guess, be the artist who you look up to. Just do your thing and do it to the best of your abilities. Um, and don't be so hard on yourself. You know, it's okay. I mean, like everyone learns at their own, uh, like pace. So those are the, I guess the two things, you know, like for insecurity, cause I've been there and the, when I'm insecure, those are the two things that, um, that like contribute to that as me comparing myself to another artist or, you know, that kind of thing. I think that's always what it kind of comes down to. Don't you think? Yes, definitely. Uh, yeah. What you just mentioned there, yeah, definitely rings true that maybe uh, many of these cases are that they have a, a circle that they do not support them. Mm. Uh, and again, like I, I went through that <laughs> and it's yeah. really hard to break up from that. Mm -hmm. But once you start uh, hanging around people who do support you, like, mm -hmm things start to change really fast. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Surround yourself with a group of like-minded people that support you and encourage you and lift you up for sure. Is there any last advice that you would like to give to people that we haven't talked about in this interview? Um, I, yeah, I, well, like I'm, I can only speak from something that I'm being enlightened by now is like, Uh, I've read a lot of um, like interviews and stuff with artists and something that rings true to me is like, tell your own stories, um, bring who you are to the animation world and the art world. And um, don't worry too much about like trends or um, what other people are doing. Um, worry, just, just put your own stories and yourself out there. And all of that stuff will ring true. I mean, like all of that stuff, people, the more specific you get, the more people can kind of relate to it. But, um, you know, I, I would encourage artists to tell their own stories of who they are. And all that stuff is interesting. Even if you don't think it's interesting, it's super interesting just because we can, it's real and we can relate to it. Um, all that stuff is interesting to me. Uh, so tell your own stories, I would say. Nice. If people want to find you online, where would be the best place to do so? Uh, so I have an Instagram, uh, Bobby Fontias on uh, Instagram, if you search that. And then uh, Tumblr, um, Bobby Fontias again. So uh, yeah, and Blogspot, you know, Bobby Fontias again. So uh, yeah, those would be the places you can find me. Great. Thanks awesome. a lot for being here yeah, no and problem. giving us yeah, your time. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. been really great to hear your, your experience and your advice. It's been great to hear about yours too, Rodrigo. Yeah, we should talk sometime. I can't wait till you guys come to CTN next year. Definitely. This time, yeah. like, we are already, like, literally right. planning already, like, all the designs and all everything right. for the all table. Right. <laughs> all, right. all right. We should, uh, we should grab dinner or lunch or something. Yes, we, cool. we definitely need to. <laughs> all right, all right. Cool. So this has been the last episode of the Creative Host Track Show. Please click the like button below, and if you like it, please share it with your friends. Until next time.